His work is titled Training Rare Object Detection in Satellite Imagery with Synthetic GAN Images. Work was completed by myself, Eric Martinson, along with Bridget Furlong and Andy Gillies at SOAR Technology in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The purpose of this work is to recognize rare objects in satellite imagery for which we have available 3D models. A rare object is one with very limited labeled training examples, 5 to 10 in images. We would expect 3D models then that describe both the object of interest as well as contrast class objects. A contrast class object is an object that might be found in the same area and has similar characteristics to the target. So for instance, with tugboats being the object of interest, then ferries, fishing vessels, maritime vessels would be other contrast classes. We'll also be depending upon the XView dataset to provide labeled training material for contrast classes and empty background images. Together, these will be fed through a GAN, and the goal is to use GAN imagery to build classifiers to support data analysts. The XView dataset was a dataset released in 2018. It contains annotated imagery for 60 different classes of objects at 0.3D meter resolution. Common objects found in XView include things like cargo planes, passenger vehicles, buses, etc. We're going to merge these XView data with 3D models to create synthetic images. Commercial 3D modeling software is used to generate images from 3D models that contain a specified viewing angle, lighting condition, and shadow. This creates a database of model images with different rotations and shadow, from which random selections can be used to merge with XView data using Mod Poisson image blurring. On closer examination of the synthetic image outputs, however, we can see that the edges of objects are too clean and that the objects themselves are often the wrong color for the associated background images. In short, they are clearly synthetic images. A generative adversarial network can help us improve the quality of our generated synthetic image. In particular, we use the off-the-shelf cycle GAN network when train it using two classes, real and synthetic. Our real class are real satellite images containing the contrast classes. Our synthetic classes are images generated from both the target class as well as contrast class 3D models. These together are fed through the Mod Poisson process and then through the cycle GAN and then back through Mod Poisson to create a much cleaner, more visually appealing output. Well, how can we use such synthetic or GAN images? Well, we see at least three different methods by which such imagery can be used to support data analysts in finding rare objects in satellite imagery. Assuming we start by training a multi-object detection network like ResNet across the entire XView dataset. We then use the ResNet weights to initialize a RetinaNet model. Additional synthetic imagery can then be used uh, first to add images to the model training process. This has been demonstrated in other domains to add utility, improving precision and recall. However, in our case, we have very little real examples of the object of interest. And so we are concerned that our use of contrast classes may impact the overall utility. Secondly, we may use the synthetic or GAN images as a validation set to estimate an image filtering threshold. If all bounding boxes evaluated as part of this image have confidence scores below the specified image threshold, then the image is rejected and not shown to the data analyst. Thirdly, we can use, again, synthetic or GAN images, but this as a validation set, this time for estimating a target queuing threshold. While an image filtering threshold may be set low to achieve high recall, a separate threshold can be used to reduce the number of queues or bounding boxes shown to the data analyst. In the first instance, adding GAN or synthetic images to the training data, we started with our GAN imagery. Adding 30 GAN images does in fact demonstrate an improvement in mean average precision over using just real images. However, not by much and not always. Adding 30 synthetic images without the GAN step actually have a greater impact on mean average precision. 
in the second instance using GAN images as a validation set to identify an image filtering threshold or the threshold for rejecting an image and not showing it to the data analyst. Synthetic validation data with and without GAN tracks surprisingly close to real imagery across all objects. And the graphs we see at the top plotting recall of the GAN validation set, test set, and synthetic validation set versus the score threshold necessary to achieve that recall. We see that especially above about an 80% recall, the three lines uh, are generally very close to each other, suggesting that both the synthetic and GAN images uh, are good validation sets. However, in further experiments, we identify that GAN images are generally better than synthetic for validation. For one, they reduce our false alarm rates on the test set from about 60% to 32% on average. Furthermore, they achieve recall within 5% of the target recall more often than synthetic. In this instance, we have more than 250 models using a GAN validation set achieved a target recall of either 85 or 95% versus only 150 images using synthetic data for validation. Finally, GAN images achieve the target more often even when synthetic images are used during model training, meaning that the two, process, two steps can be combined. GAN images can also be used as a validation set to identify a target queuing threshold. Uh, in this case, the GAN validation set picks a threshold for bounding box detection. However, in this instance, precision was only predictable out to about 30%, but the GAN validation as with image filtering threshold, remained better than synthetic images and more predictive of precision than without it. In summary, what we've demonstrated are the basic steps for an active learning system. We want to use this information to develop an interface for training a new classifier with human support. Start by training with our large net and adding some synthetic images which we have demonstrated to be the best way of improving our model performance. We can then use our GAN image set for threshold detection, identifying image filtering thresholds and target queuing thresholds. A human in the loop then does analysis to extract new detections, at which point these are fed back in as new training data and the process repeats. In the future, we intend to evaluate the utility of the overall system. Identifying can we significantly reduce the number of training images required and how close to real time do we need to integrate newly identified images by an analyst in order to still be useful. Thank you very much.